welcome to Buy Some Coffee. So was it always going to be a cafe and a vintage store or were you thinking about one or the other and realised you could combine both of them? It was always going to be a combination of both really. Um, yeah? I'm trained in the restaurant business and cafes and I grew up with a family of vintage suppliers and architectural salvage merchants so it was just an obvious choice for me really to do both. Um, play to your strengths as yeah. it were. Yeah. And is that what influenced having this particular look for the whole Yeah, place. definitely. I mean, this is something which I asked, I did in collaboration with my mother who has a salvage business down south and we always wanted it to look American from the 30s, 40s, pre-1950s really. And it got a lot of wood, metal, industrial salvage, things like that. But we always, we, I mean, this kind of stuff is just all over in my house anyway so it's just a natural progression for me to bring it to the cafe and then try and flog it. <laughs> Did you consider many or any other locations? Uh, or? Never really locations. I considered a few places on this street. It was always Hesington Road. It was always going to be this? Yeah. After my market research, and um, I actually rode for about two years, rode on every street and area in York, so I know the place quite well now. <laughs> and this is the place which I couldn't understand why there was nothing else here in. Yeah. Uh, it's the epicentre of the student population. It's down the road from 14,000 students on and off at any one time and yet there's nothing here apart from a kebab shop, a curry house, a spa yeah. and a property shop which is, I just found ridiculous, there's no bars, there's no cafes, there's nothing else. So this was an obvious choice for me really from day one. There's a few different venues I looked up on the street and this was the first one which came within the price budget I'd set myself. Mm -hmm. so and is, is that who you see your main custom base as being students? I'd say 70% students but there's also 30% of the local. Yeah. population, there's a lot of alternative minded people, people that would have enjoyed, and like there is in any suburban area in this city or any other city, there's a lot of people, that, there's enough people to suffice a small business to serve it, um, so we get a, we get 30% local people, um, you do get a small percentage of people who travel from long distances over the other side of the city to come and see us specifically for whatever reason, which is brilliant, but it was majority of the students, that's always a good base. Yeah. Well, I mean, we couldn't survive for 12 months a year based on them alone, really. Um, that's hence why we do all the stuff during the summer to try and bring people in. Really. And how does uh, your involvement in music tie in with the cafe? And well, it's, it's integral, really, to everything we do. I mean, everybody we have working here, um, everybody who comes in here regularly has some sort of involvement in the music scene in York. And it's got to a situation where we've become a sort of place people come when they want to get the situations resolved. Um, recording time, you'll meet people in here that'll be able to help each other, filmmakers, artists, writers. And we've been really lucky that we forged that sort of ethos in the place, which is always intentional, it's not an accidental yeah. thing. Um, but it, sometimes you don't get the look of the draw and it doesn't happen. So you can have all the best intentions in the world and you won't get any of that. You'll just get constantly the other sort and that's when you kind of get a bit down. But um, here we're really lucky. We're just far enough out of town for those kind of people to come and have somewhere to hide away, as it were. <laughs> but it's integral to what we do. Um, I worked in music, Sam's a musician here. So everything we do is geared towards music of some kind. It sets our mood on the morning. <laughs> for starters. <laughs> and plans for the future? Um, we're moving into a few different things. Yeah. Um, we're doing the podcasting radio with Crying Bear, which is another project of ours, which is a separate arts-based organisation. We're going to be doing a graphic design consultation and radio promotion things for events further afield. Um, we're starting to run events in the, all the local pubs around here, living given nights and open fist to do whatever we want with, which is a bit dangerous for them. <laughs> but we can put all sorts of alternative acts, new acts on and really get them promoted. And plus we're serving the local area again. I mean, like I said, there's so many students here. We have, we're friends with the guys who own the Rock and Gas School and the Wheatpack pubs. Um, so we work in conjunction all together trying to promote everything 
all of us. So we do acoustic gigs here, um, and we're going to push on to doing more nights outside um, for other people, promoting our brand and helping fledgling businesses get this all important student dollar into there. Really, that's our push. There's a lot more to come. <laughs> <laughs> where to start yet? <laughs> the ideas came first, the work.